Good morning. Dwayne here, Dry Creek Wrangler School. Uh, Mom and I are out here in the tack shed uh, in the barn this morning wanting to make a video. It's kind of rainy and windy and cool outside. And uh, so we came in here. Today is the first day of the last week of the school this year. Um, and so we uh, looking forward to this week's class, and but also looking forward to a little bit of time off. Um, and uh, so we're going to finish out this week here. There's no more classes, no more signing up, no more um, standby. Uh, 2022 is in the books. And it's been a good year, and uh, Mom and I have both just very, very humbly and very gratefully uh, thank everybody that uh, made this year so good for us. And uh, so we're going to just hunker down here for the winter and then head out to the new place in Wyoming this spring. And uh, so um, that's what we're doing today. I, uh, I got to thinking a little while back, and so I got online and did a little bit of research, and I got on the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration website and uh, was looking stuff up, and I found out on there that the average thunderstorm, this is what they said, um, the average thunderstorm is about 15 miles across. Now some obviously are, are much larger and some are much smaller, but according to them, the average size is about 15 mile across. Now I got to thinking, and so I looked up what is the average size of a commercial fishing trawler off the coast of the United States? And they said between 30 and 35 feet. Now let's go to 35 feet, just for the sake of solid numbers. 35 feet, 15 miles. 35 feet, 15 miles. Now if you are one of these fishing trawlers out on the ocean, and you get hit by a storm, it feels pretty big. You're in a 35 foot boat, and you're surrounded by a 15 mile storm. But in that situation, there's some things that you need to keep in mind. You were not responsible for the storm. You didn't start the storm and you can't stop the storm. Now, you can sure enough cry out to the master of the storm uh, and ask him for help but some of you don't believe in the master of the storm. So you don't have to do that either. Uh, you can just get through the storm on your own. And, uh, but you need to realize that walking out, running out on the deck, shaking your fist at the storm, isn't gonna do any good. Pointing at the storm and saying, the storm caused this, isn't gonna do any good. Falling down, down below, on. <clears throat> in the, the, down below in the boat and curling up in the fetal position and sticking your thumb in your mouth and crying out about the tragedy of it all isn't gonna help. You are only responsible for your little boat and whoever is on board that boat trusting in you, be it a spouse, be it your children, be it whoever, it's just you and that boat. Now, I have my boat. You have your boat. And we're going somewhere here. Now, if I'm out there and I hear a distress call from you on your boat, it does no good for me to run up on the deck of my boat and point to the storm. It does no good to say, this is what cost it. So what we need to do is we need to change the storm because the storm is wrecking all these boats. You can't change the storm. What you can do is go help the boat. Now, what, what am I bringing up here? I've got, we're having some fantastic conversations on the channel uh, in the comment sections and both sides and it's really good it's really expanding but there are a lot of folks who are responding 
and to this video I did a little while back about the um, the situation of uh, men being lost and alone and feeling alone in this country and uh, and uh, and a lot of folks are saying and on the surface I don't disagree with you but a lot of folks are saying well the problem is our society today so what we need to do is we need to change society our problem is our government has instituted these policies and these policies are causing this and this is destroying this and this is destroying this so what we need to do is we need to change the policies listen society is a construct it's made up of people and people are made up of persons and you don't change society by changing the political nature of things. I had one person and they, they were sincere. It was, there was no argument or anything. They were sincere and they said, we need to change uh, the nature of society. And so we need to look beyond the individual. We need to look at the greater good. That never works. And they used the illustration of Gandhi. Well, let's, let's take that because it's a good point. And I think it's a good illustration of the two different views. And so I just want to springboard off of this into my view. Gandhi didn't change anything for the betterment of India. Now, I know that's heresy to a lot of folks, but let's look at it logically. Gandhi changed, he, <clears throat> Gandhi changed the political ruling parties. Okay? Now, I'm not against a country throwing off the yoke of its colonizers and they got independent rule. I'm not, not fighting that, not arguing with it, not against it. But the reality is the poverty that was endemic in India underneath Great Britain is still endemic underneath Indian rule. The caste system, which has been there for thousands of years, which keeps his foot on the neck of a huge portion of the population in India and will not let them rise and will not let them better themselves is still in effect. That person who is in abject poverty and has no hope of ever getting out of abject par poverty underneath the British rule is in the exact same condition underneath Indian rule because that's the system. That's the system. The system didn't change. And if Gandhi didn't change the system, what are you going to do? You say, well, in this country we have the vote. You know what? I, I believe in our right and our freedom and our responsibility to vote. Okay? And I encourage people to vote. Um, but the vote isn't going to change anything. Because who are you going to vote for? Politicians are not going to change the system. Okay? Take a swamp, and the gas bubbles in the swamp that rise to the top started at the bottom. They're just the ones that rose to the top. And the politicians, they're just the gas bubbles that rose to the top. Everything starts at the bottom. If you want to change a society, if you want to change the storm, the only way you could do that is by changing people. And if you want to change people by helping people, you have to help the person. And a lot of times this collective speak, okay, words, we heard that before. This, we have to help the collective, you know. We have to, we have to change the system. It's amazing if you look at history, if you look at uh, Karl Marx, if you look at Lenin, uh, if you look at these guys, um, they wanted to change the system to help the collective. It's amazing how many millions and millions and millions of individual people starved to death or were brutalized or murdered all in the name of changing the system. You don't change the system. You're in the storm and you can't change the storm. You say, Dwayne, that is a defeatist attitude. No, it's not. It's realistic. It's realistic. You navigate your boat and if you hear a distress call from another boat you go help that boat but if you take your hands off the wheel 
and take your eye off the horizon in order to go out and try to change the storm, you're going to sink your boat. And their boat's going to sink too because you weren't there to help them. You need to take care of yourself and those around you. It doesn't matter, folks. It does not matter who gets into office in two years. It doesn't matter. Because the system that we have today, the culture and the society we have today, was not perpetuated by politicians. It is the common man on the street who votes in the politicians and puts them in office. If the common people were not what they were, they would not elevate people like AOC into office. All right? That woman's an idiot. She's a blithering idiot. But yet it was people on the street. It was the culture. It was the system who voted her into office. And so you're not going to change this country from the top down. And you're not going to change it by becoming some sort of um, miniature March or Minister Tolstoy or whatever. You're going to change it by being a strong person, a solid, grounded person, a caring person. And it's going to be an individual helping an individual and individuals helping individuals. That's what changes things. All right. So now specifically. I've got so many contacts and because of the nature of the video from young men who say they're just completely lost. They're just completely lost. Their life is, o a lot of them, their life is over. Um, they don't know what to do. They don't know who they are. They don't know where to go. Listen, your boat's been hit by a storm. Now, first off, cry out to the master of the storm. All right. Um, and then pick a destination. What is your destination? My destination is to be a solid, good, grounded, caring, helpful, productive man or woman. You're not going to get your boat out of the storm without a destination. You have to move out of the storm. Now, when you pick a destination, plot a course. Plot a course. How am I going to get from here to there? Well, Maybe you're going to start going to church. Maybe not. All right. Uh, I'm not going <laughs> to not going to go. It's a trap. It's a trap. People sitting there right now with their buttons ready to start typing. All right. Maybe you're going. I don't know. You're going to start finding some older people to hang out with. Maybe you're going to go down and start volunteering um, somewhere. Plot a course. You're going to learn how to do something. Let me do a parenthesis and a side note here. What do you do? What do you do? I don't mean how are you making a living. I don't mean you're sitting somewhere in a cubicle or you're flipping burgers or, or you're pouring concrete or you're roofing a house. That's how we're making a living. At the core of you, who are you and what do you do? What makes you, you? You need to start by figuring that out. You need to start by figuring that out. You need to plot a course. And you need to set your eyes on the prize. And you need to stay the course. All right? And you know, um, I'm not a boat man. But I did spend several years in Alaska. And I've had in-laws that grew up commercial fishermen. And I've been on a couple of commercial fishing boats I know enough to know that if you don't want your ship to capsize in a storm you steer into the waves you plow into the waves if you turn the stern of your boat away you're going to get swamped if you go sideways to the waves you're going to get swamped stand there on that deck get a hold of that wheel and you steer into the storm into the waves and you get out the other side and no storm lasts forever don't quit i'm i'm shocked and heartbroken and mortified by how many times in the last week on the channel the word suicide have come up 
Don't do that. Don't do that. You lose. Okay, I'm going to end with this. This is going to be a short one, all right? I want you to do an exercise this week. I want you to do an exercise. I want you to go to where you live one evening, whether it's your house, uh, your, your trailer, your apartment, whatever, when there's nobody around. Nobody around. The wife's gone. The kids are gone. If you got wife and kids, the dogs are outside. The cat is upstairs sleeping on the bed, whatever. The TV is off. The Xbox is off. The PS, what is it? PS4 is off. PlayStation, okay, is off. Your phone is turned off and slid in a drawer in the kitchen. The only thing you can hear is maybe the humming of the refrigerator over in the corner. Sit down at your kitchen table with a piece of paper and a pencil. And if you died today, if you died today, write your obituary. What would it say? Write your obituary as though you died today. What would it say? When you're done, look at it. Is that what you want your obituary to say? When you're done, wad it up and throw it away. And then start rewriting your obituary with your life. Start living your life in such a way that when your day is done, whenever that may be, you have totally rewritten what will be written about you. You have totally rewritten who you are. Now, maybe your obituary today says, here lies John Doe. Didn't know who his daddy was. Mom was a drug addict and a prostitute. Grew up abused, addicted to drugs at 12 years old, in and out of reform school. 18, married a woman he didn't love. Woman didn't love him. Had a baby. At 21, wife took the baby and left. Wound up in a dead end job. Wound up with no hope. Wound up with no direction wound up full of despair and depression, died today. It doesn't have to be like that. You've got the rest of your life. And at the end of it, your obituary can say, here lies Jane Doe. Came from a terrible background, had no hand up that anybody could discern, had every reason to fail, had every reason to get bitter, had every reason to be mean, had every reason to quit, but he didn't quit. Dried out and cleaned up. Went back to school. Learned a trade that he loved. Studied that trade and loved that trade to the point he became a master at that trade. Respected by everybody around him. Honored by those who knew him, emulated by the kids he raised, we're going to miss him. You can go from this obituary today to that obituary, but it's up to you. It's up to you to steer your boat. Nobody can do this stuff on their own. Get some help. Get some advice. Surround yourself with good, strong people. All right? There's also been some talk on there, folks having to move back home. L listen, let, let, me, let me tell you something. Before there was ever any such thing as a society, before there was any such thing as culture, before there's any such thing as the church, before there was any such thing as government, there was family. Everything is built on family. Everything. There is no shame. There is no shame. You hit a wall and things are cracked up and you go back home, that's something to be proud of. Because that says, I have a family. The government ain't helping me. Society's not helping me. Maybe some of the overstuffed religious institutions around me are not helping me but my mom was there my mom was there 
There's no shame in that. Don't be ashamed of that. You got to go home, go home. Partner up with mom. It's family, man. Families, families are the oldest institution on the face of this planet. And it's only in this modern society we have today where it becomes a shame. Where it becomes a shame for families to stick together in hard times and help each other out. Now, I know, I know there's people out there. I know there's kids living in their basement sucking off their mom and dad like parasites who refuse to go out, who refuse to get a job, who refuse to try to better themselves. Failure to launch. I know that's out there, but that ain't you, buddy. That ain't you. All right? You're steering your ship through the storm. And you're not going to shake your fist at the storm because that doesn't do any good. That doesn't do any good. All right? And everybody around, there's ships out there that are sending out distress signals. Go help them. Don't sit there in the safety and comfort of the birth of your little boat and say, that storm's taking out another one. That storm is destroying another one. Man, these damn storms are just killing everybody. What's the matter with you? What's the matter with you? All right? So just... They tell the story about the frog that fell into the milk pail and couldn't get out, so he just kept kicking. He just kept kicking. He just kept kicking. He refused to give up. He refused to drown. Eventually, he turned that milk pail into butter, climbed on top of the butter and jumped out. You just keep churning, man. You just keep churning, and you'll get out. And if you don't get out, if you don't get out, you go down proud. You're one of the few who fought to the bitter end. You might die, but you die a warrior. And when I say die, I'm talking metaphorically. Okay? All right? Be a warrior. Be a warrior. All right? I don't know. This has really been on my heart this week, and I've really been chewing on this a lot. Before we go, Charter Oak, Connecticut Shade. Um, it's the closest thing I've got to an everyday cigar. Uh, little cigar knowledge here. The lighter cigars, your Connecticut Shades, they're... They tend to be more mellow, and they tend to be uh, easier and uh, softer than the darker Maduros or Oscuros. But one thing to know is the curing of tobacco leaves is like the roasting of coffee. Your dark roast coffee has less caffeine than your light roast breakfast blend because the roasting, the roasting gets rid of the, the, uh, the higher caffeine percentages. And the darker, richer, stronger the cigar, the less nicotine it has. So you're more likely to get a hit from a light cigar than you are a heavy one sometimes, okay? Anyhow, just throwing that little tidbit out there. Love you guys, I don't even know you. I don't even know you, but I love you guys, all right? And gals, and uh, just, just hang in there, all right? And uh, we'll catch you guys next time.